Steve Coogan. Steve Coogan. Do you want? Do you can? You, if you've got a minute, you can Google him. I'll Google him. All right. Okay. I love Steve Coogan so much. Thanks. I'm, You're I'm, not so bad yourself. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yes. That's my Alexa. I wasn't talking to you. I was talking about Steve Coogan. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> This week's guest is another old friend, somebody that I, I saw on screen before I ever worked with him and I was kind of amazed by his talent. I ended up working with him. He's a writer, he's an actor, he's a singer, he's a performer. It's Matt Lucas. It's so nice to see you. Yeah, it's nice to see you as well. It's been uh, 13 years. <laughs> no, it hasn't. Has it? No. No. It's not been 13 years. But you know you've got um, that picture of Sydney behind you. The last yeah, time we did a FaceTime chat, you were in Sydney. Do you remember? Yeah, well, now I'm in London in my little... I was living in Los Angeles for seven years, but I've sold my house. You married Rebel Wilson, is that right? People either think we're the same person or brother and sister or husband and wife or all three. We were in Sydney. I was touring last year and then we had a holiday and uh, my wife came over with some of the children, the ones that please me. And I was in the restaurant having breakfast and there was Rebel Wilson. So oh. I went over to her and did that thing. Hi, you don't know me, but I know your friend Matt Lucas. And it was a bit awkward. She, she was nice, but I could tell that it really wasn't adding to her day. Um. Yeah, it probably wasn't. <laughs> Joking. I was trying to think of something to say. I think, knowing you as I do, I've always thought that you and I are similar in I think that we were quite well-behaved, polite children. I think I was. I think uh, I, I wasn't um, like, yeah, I wasn't going out and getting drunk and being horrendously thuggish or anything like that. I mean, I had a little spell probably for a year when between the ages of like 15, 16, 17, around then where you're just figuring out what are the boundaries. And yeah. Oh, other, okay. Your friends are doing things that are just a bit naughty and you're like, oh, she said, oh, and it doesn't, no one's telling us off. This is kind of, oh, maybe I should just do that. But it wasn't, it wasn't really in me, but I didn't really want to ever get told off by a policeman, which I never was for anything. So I don't, uh, yes, I think essentially I was quite a good boy. You know, know that thing it, where you, someone does an interview and they say, have you ever broken the law? And they say, well, just, I don't, you know, a bit of the, the other thing everyone does is shoplifting, that sort of thing. <laughs> I, what? What do, you, what do you mean the well, way I everybody mean, does? I've never shoplifted. What are you talking I know. about? I know. I've done some murders, but yeah. I mean. Yeah. There's more manslaughter, some, really, you know. There's a lot of people in the world. I remember when I first saw you as George Dawes on Shooting Stars. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of. Blown away. Oh, who, this, who is this guy? Because you didn't look like anybody else. You, you, yeah. and, and you were so fully formed. You were so audacious. Well, I, well, I was sort of, I had everything except actually the jokes. Because actually what I was was just a bit weird and freaky and wild. But actually, if you think about it, you know, I learned so much from working with David Walliams because David understood, you know, structure of a sketch, structure of a joke. So I had this kind of energy and this do some funny voices or whatever, but I didn't, I was pretty directionless. You know, Shooting Stars was incredible because Vic and Bob would give me freedom to do what I wanted, but actually David wouldn't. And that was what was brilliant because we would kind of figure out and, and, I, would, and I would keep him in check as well. We want the laughs. And I think sometimes looking back on Shooting Stars, I could have got better laughs. I could have done better, you know, and so wow. it's weird, but then... You know, that's just me, and I kind of, I think that when I, wa I was watching The Bake Off, you know, which had just started hosting, and I was like, oh, should have done a gag there. Oh, this, that. Oh, why did you do that? So I think that's also a natural I thing. I think that that's all... just, that's just, you, you were terrific on Bake Off. You've had wonderful write-ups okay. about it. You know, it, it's, you're, you're a hit on it, and it's not easy stepping into those shoes. You say you wanted more laughs, maybe, but you had such charisma and presence, and I would watch you and go, Wow, you know, when you'd sit there at the drums and you'd do a thing on the drums and you'd say, so-and-so has this point, so -and, -so, and then you'd say something just obscure and obtuse. I mean, where are you, how are you doing that at such a young age? Thank you for those compliments. The, the thing is that um, you'd have to go back. Really, it, well, this was this thing, which was like, when I was six years old, I lost my, you know, my hair fell out. 
I'd either be sort of really bullied by people quite badly, or I'd be really patronized by people. And it was like, that was the only thing anybody need know about me. It was like no other aspect of me really mattered because I was the kid with no hair. So I feel like people didn't really, you know, make an effort to find out anything about me or I, I, yeah. and I realized early on that I was, I was either going to be this sort of victim, you know, kind of, uh, of pity and ridicule, or I was going to have to kind of, it was like a sink or swim thing. I sort of uh, fast tracked right. uh, a, a personality and character. Yeah. And there were also elements I had, you know, quite, quite um, challenging upbringing because, you know, um, feeling a sense of uh, shame and anger and frustration and confusion about, about being attracted to the same sex uh, at a time when, you know, the law was against yeah. gay people yeah. and, you know, struggling with, you know, you, you know, doing a lot of comfort eating. and do So I was just sort of um, a lot of neurosis and anxiety and all those things. And then, but, but when I got on stage, it was the one place, you know, through school plays and I did like national youth yeah. theatre where I met David and before that, the national youth music theatre, doing those, that kind of performing was a place where I had some control. I should say to you now that this is, I'm learning stuff now too. I, I didn't know you were gay and I didn't know you were bald. So this is quite, well, I, it's quite the interview for me. I didn't know I was fat. <laughs> I'm not bald, my hair grows inwards. Nice, nice. Do you remember where we met? We must have met through David, surely. Yeah, because I met him. But I tell you, my first memory of you is watching I think the first episode of Little Britain Go Out, was that at David's flat? It was in David's flat, yeah. yeah. And I think maybe Russell Brand was there even. Or... Yeah, so we would have met at David's house and he had spoken very highly of you because you had been on Cruise of the Gods together. Or was it just called The Cruise in the end? It was called, no, it's called Cruise of the Gods. Cruise of the Gods with, with um, obviously, Steve Coogan and James Corden and you. You and Steve were the main yeah. stars. Yeah. And, and then... He told me the whole story of the that the ship was had a leak and so you all had to transfer to another yeah. cruise ship and that you and there was a shortage of rooms and that he um was he shared the bed with you for how long? <laughs> a couple of weeks, I think. <laughs> yeah. So but you actually became like really close friends off the back of that. And you still yeah. are yeah. really close yeah. friends, which is great. He was it? so funny. I mean he was doing that shtick. He'd say, Well, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go up on the top deck. Well, I wish you would. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you most like to uh, interview? David Walliams. Yeah, he's he's a he's a tough one to get. Have you done David yet? No, no, no. He'll he'll be quite cross that I've done you first. <laughs> he'll be annoyed. Yeah, I just thought just thought it was a bit odd. That's all. Uh, you, you know, you, you know me better. No, I mean I'm not 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 hurt. I just eh, just just thought a bit strange. That's he's all. a busy he's a busy boy. I spoke to him a couple of hours ago, and he was he was out walking his dog. I would like to get more dogs, but I I live in um a very dinky little two bedroom house with no outside space because I was living in America, as I say. And then I, and I kept a little place in London, just a tiny little place for when I came back. It's like at the moment fires raging across the West coast and there's Trump and there's, you know, there's a lot of unrest there. And, and you, no, um, hang on a minute, Matt. You're not, you're not another one of those liberal Trump bashers, are you? I hope, not, we, I hope we're not going to fall out over this, Matt, because Give that guy a break. Well, you know, I'm actually, I'm actually not wild about him. <laughs> but um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna um, uh, get too political because I got told off for getting political on the first episode of the Bake Off already. So politics will. Um, uh, what you, you mean know. for that Boris thing? But that was yeah, lovely. No, no, I didn't get told off by. Not by the channel or anything, yeah. but like uh, some people complained of. Course. Yeah, I know. I, I read that. 200. That, that, that's not enough. I think enough. it's up to 400 now. I'm Still, not enough. Enough. Still not enough. Still not enough. Still not enough. I know. I'd like it to be more. I'd like <laughs> it to be more. That was really lovely, that sketch. Uh, did you write Thank that? You. Did you improvise it? How did that come about? It was, well, I did I did a sort of silly Boris impression a few months ago just on Twitter, and it sort of went yeah. a bit viral. And, um, but it was Noel's idea. Noel said... You know, why don't I do? It would be a great way to introduce the series and also to introduce me. And My know, favourite line, I hope it was yours, was the printer is upside down. Oh, yeah, I just improvised that, yeah. That's very funny. That's Thank very you. funny. I Thank laughed you. out loud at that. Oh, well, bless you. 
Um, thank you. Uh, no, so it was a, it was a team effort. Me and yeah. we wrote it together. It was, but it was his idea, and it was his idea that I should get an audition to co-host with him. So I really owe him. And I have to say, I mean, Paul and Prue were so lovely and welcoming. Yeah. And Noel was just been brilliant to work with, and and we just we just laughed the whole time. We just laughed. He makes me laugh so much. And and actually, we, you know, we identified that we've both been in double acts, and we both are. You know, I mean, yeah. I'm sure he'll do stuff with Julian again. Yeah. And I'm going to do stuff with David again. And we 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 had just identified that we were because we knew the dynamic of being in a double act. We were very respectful of oh, this is your moment. And sometimes you come up with a joke, but that doesn't mean you say the joke just because you came up with it. Also, the other thing Noel's brilliant at is improvising. So oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll just be stood there doing a launch for a, a bake and Noel will just throw something in and I'll just, we're in a, you know, I'm in a mess sometimes because he makes me laugh so much. The last thing that you and I did together, because of course our involvement for the casual viewer, I acted in a little bit of Little Britain. I script, yeah. script edited series two, but that's a very grand title because all I did was sit in a room with you and read through sketches with you. And my memory, I'm not being self-deprecating you, but my memory is that all I did was go, oh, I like that. And uh, what if that was a tiny bit shorter? That's my memory of it, Matt. Yeah, no, you were instructive. You were very helpful and you were, we were blessed actually. We had Mark Gatiss in the first series, you in the second series and Richard Herring in the third series. And every, all of you brought so much to it and you're great so you know we've great. done we've done a couple of benefit shows together we did the uh, harry Shearer and judith owens christmas uh, oh, show yeah, we, did, Remember, we, we? we sang a song together but most recently your fantastic baked potato song we sang hey and i had such a response i actually wrote it before shooting stars <laughs> and i was doing songs on shooting stars and i didn't think it was any good so I never really, I just used to sing it for the amusement of my brother. I mean, I wrote it over 20 years ago. And then I thought, oh, I'll do it on Shooting Stars. And then actually people really liked it. And I had a new, uh, this actually piano that I'm sat at came. I can probably get some sound uh, out of this. Oh, I have to turn the volume up. Yeah. And so, I, you know, I was just sitting here and it's, it's such a simple thing to do. Da, 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 da. It's so simple and it's just all... It's just warm, isn't it? And so I did that. And yeah, and it just took a life of its own. And then at the same time, I was sort of had a little involvement in the launch of this new charity, Feed NHS. Yeah. And um, which actually John Vincent, who's kind of brains behind Leon and Helen McCrory and um, uh, uh, Damien Lewis really did all the legwork for that. And why don't we try and do a little bit of what I like to think of as our baked potato song, right we here, can. right now. Yeah, but what's going to happen? Is there going to be a time delay? Is it I know, but it'll be fun. It'll be chaos. Okay. I didn't know we were going to do this. I just... Baked potato changed my life. Go on. Baked potato showed me the way. If you want to know what is wrong from right. Listen to what potatoes say. Wash your hands. Stay, stay indoors. indoors. Only Thank you, baked potato. If you want to have a better day, you listen to what the baked potatoes potato say. I mean, you know, people talk about Paul McCartney and Stevie Wonder, but for me, music, musicals. I envy the amount of musical work you've done. I'd like to, but oh, when you've got kids, the thought of being out that late, knackered the next day. How much did you love Les Miserables? I love doing Les Mis because it's one of those jobs where at the end of the day you feel like you've been to work because it's sort of so rousing and hearty and you've sort of, everyone in Les Mis gets a chance to really yeah. kind of sing. And then because it's quite heavy as a show and most people in it die, um, <laughs> that actually backstage, you know, you're, everybody sort of comes together and everyone's like professional and focused and wants to do the best show they can do because that's important, and but back, backstage, you just have a laugh, because it's so heavy, what's going on on stage. So um, it's great, and like your friend John Owen Jones um, is a brilliant guy to work with, because you'll be on stage and you'll slightly fluff something and you'll sort of get away with it. And then John will just come into your dressing room at the interval and 
bellow out the, the bit that you made a mistake. You know, it's like nobody would, it's not a show where no one, nobody will mention it gets wrong. When you get it wrong, everyone comes in and they're all just, everybody's texting you from their dressing rooms, doing impressions of you and everyone's having a laugh. And it's also just a brilliant piece of theatre. And yeah. the music, I mean, yeah. I've yeah. known that music now since 1985 or something, 86. I, I, I'm not bored of it yet. Yeah. And I've yeah. been in the show countless times. It, there's always something new to sing. And I'll tell you something else that's brilliant about the show is even now, you know, 35 years on, when you go into that show, Claude Michel Schoenberg, the composer, will still come and see it sometimes. And he'll still give you notes. I think that's why the show is still so popular because it's because it's alive. Yeah. And that's and that's Cameron Macintosh right at the very top. Well, I spoke to Omid on on one of these interviews, Omid Jalili and he did uh, Oliver and he tells yeah. a funny story in the interview about ad-libbing a line and it goes in the show report Cameron finds out Cameron was in his dressing room when he came off. <laughs> what are you doing? Because, of course, I think Hamid put a total new line in because you're doing the same thing. He saw, he said, he saw there was a bit in the script where he just thought, this is crying out for this line. The kids pull out a pair of his stained underwear during you got to pick a pocket or two. And they say, cool, Fagin, these are rotten or something. And and Omid ad-libbed, so would you if you'd spent six hours next to my bollocks. <laughs> That's not what he actually said, is it? Uh, something like, maybe knackers instead of bollocks. I don't know. Wow. Wow. <laughs> it's hilarious. But that's um, Ahmed. I mean, he's a force of nature. He, he won't I mean, be tamed. It's hilarious, but you've got to think of Dickens as the source material here. <laughs> it's been adorable catching up with you. Before we go, no. I am a genie. I can give Matt Lucas one wish. Top of your head, what would it be? Where I live now, it's a little house. If I had a house with a big kitchen, I'd really like um, a Mr. Whippy machine in my kitchen. Okay, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna go away. I'm gonna work on that. I'm gonna try Thank and make you. your dream come true. Thank you. I just would, I just think it'd be really nice. Okay, I, I was I was. You might have said world peace, but hey, Rob, they're about um, two thousand four hundred pounds. I've looked them up. So yeah, I don't think they're any available at the moment. They're really hard to get. There's quite a lot available. It's the winter. I think the tape is running out, actually. I'm going to have to, going to, have to cut it short. Um, really nice to catch up with you. Thanks for doing this. And uh, should we have, we have one of our lunches soon? I would love that. Do you know, I've not been to a restaurant or a shop since the beginning of March. I've been properly... Really? I've got asthma and I'm a chubby chops. And so I've been really, really anxious. But could we go for a socially distanced walk? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then yeah. when all of this is over, I would love to take you for lunch because it's my turn. Yeah, well, I'm glad you remember. Lovely to see you. Bye-bye. Mwah. Mwah. Social Mwah. distance walk. I love you. Bye-bye.